Hey everybody, welcome to the Players Take Reflections number four. I'm your host Justin DeSimone, joined by the king of physical games, Montreal Rice. <laughs> How's it going, man? Hey, what's up? Uh, for those of you who haven't listened before, the Players Take is our weekly show where we talk about video games, video game news, and other topics pertaining to video games. We post uh, at 6 a.m. Central Time on Fridays on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and your favorite podcast app of choice. As you heard, this is a Reflections episode. Uh, we are recording this in advance once again because Montreal is going out of town next week and won't be able to record man yeah. he's going to the beach <laughs> i won't say where but you know he's going on a nice little beach vacation in the middle of august it has been unseasonably hot here in texas yes like uncomfortably so to the point where it's not even comfortable to be in a car with air conditioning blasting yeah is it, does it normally get this hot down here i mean you've you been know, down here august is the worst the oh. absolute worst month like i mean i hate that i hate this month in general oh this is the worst month of the year <laughs> objectively the worst month of the year there's no question about that i think i hate this month since school because i that's your back to school period time yes. you start seeing ads you get back depressed to, you're yeah. like man i only got two weeks left. Man, I <laughs> exactly got, like, i only got a week left man, yeah we got two days left man i gotta go to school tomorrow exactly yeah, yeah. it sucks so, i get to go through that every year with my wife because she's a teacher ah yeah so mm. you never left it nope <laughs> i get to experience that that the ups and downs of summer uh, vicariously through her <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so this episode of reflection so you were having a nice little twitter argument with a bunch of people on twitter yeah i think it was earlier this week it wasn't was earlier it? this week yeah. yeah you told me about it and i was like you know what we need to do a Reflections episode anyways. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So um, you were kind of arguing with people about uh, the all-digital future, and a lot of people seem to be in vehement support of all-digital. A lot more people than we suspected. Um, I know you said a long time ago, even off the podcast, that we're uh, a minority. Yes. I didn't really believe you as far as being an all-physical user. Oh, well, not all-physical. I do have, I say, 90%. Um, physical and maybe ten percent digital. I'm the same. Yeah. Um. So I didn't really believe it, but just even talking to some of our coworkers and uh, just that Twitter argument and everything of that nature. Well, it was really an argument. It was just a debate. I was getting people's opinions on it. Yeah. yeah. It was actually pretty civil to be honest with you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, it seemed like a friendly disagreement for the most part yeah um no throat ripping out and yeah exactly go die in a fire you, <laughs> damn, you damn physical believer uh so so <laughs> yeah a lot of people are digital now or going digital or 90 percent digital yeah um they don't see the use of having a physical media anymore yeah and um yeah i i I think it's pretty scary. They yes. don't really see it as being scary. Um, they call me like a kind of a conspiracy theorist in that in that aspect. Yeah. Or, uh, I don't know what's the word for them. Like the people that prepare for disasters, like uh, doomsday prepper. Yeah, doomsday prepper. You're doomsday prepper for digital yeah. gaming. Yeah. <laughs> um, because they're they're like <laughs> you have a bunker. You have a bunker full of all full of video games. Like a, like a movie wall games. to wall, baby. Wall to wall, man. <laughs> Could you imagine an apocalypse and people coming like, you got Fallout 3, man, I can't find it. You, you got like, you have a backup generator that is like solar power. In it. Montreal, I hope you have that. Cause, man, if the apocalypse happens, bro, I'm coming to you. Like, man, I'm still going to need my gaming fix. You know? But yeah, so um, people were saying, oh, people were, you know, really, I guess we can just jump right into it. Um, like with digitals, they come with a kind of a back end mm -hmm. clause that you know you actually rent. Yeah, for, you don't own the license. You don't own the license to the game. So if they want to strip it off the market and you can't, it's not available on the server to download anymore. Mm -hmm. If you delete it off your game, if you delete your console or whatever, it's gone forever. You can't get it back, even if you bought it for sixty bucks or whatever. And I told people like, you know, this is what they can do. And a lot of people were telling me like, hey, you are really paranoid. No company would do this. The backlash would be huge, which is true. The backlash would be huge, but it's still a simple fact that they can do it. And this has happened with yes. several games already. Oh, yeah. So the biggest, yeah, this, this is kind of the biggest negative to digital games. And I think for, I would say, 90 to 95% of people, they probably don't care about this. But <clears throat> the reality of business in the gaming industry or being in 
being a console manufacturer is that you have a network that maintains your digital marketplace. Yep. Right. You have this for however many devices you have. Your Switch, you have it for Vita, you have it for PlayStation 4, you have it for Xbox One. And basically, the eventually, it makes sense to not host that platform's games anymore because you it costs money to host these games on a ser- on servers. Yeah. You know, they're not free. It's not free for them to do this. It is a cost of doing business. But there is a point um, eventually, you know, 10 years after the after the console stops being ma- manufactured, five years, however long it is, yeah. that there's no reason. You're not selling enough games to even justify having them up anymore. And once it's shut down, you're done. So when PS3's cut off from PSN, like you said, if you don't have your games downloaded and you own all your games digitally... You're do- you, you don't get to play them anymore. You can't. There's no way for you to play those games. A lot of people don't find that scary. Yeah. Um. I I did mention that's actually a good thing. The PS3. I said that to someone on, online, and he was like, "I don't care. I don't play PS3 anymore." And I was like, "Okay, cool. You don't do that. But what about people who do go back and play their PS3?" Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but a lot of the PS3, the PS3 um, infrastructure hosts a lot of PS2 games that you can mm-hmm. still download that yep. you can't download on the well, PS4. PS1 as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. PS1 classics as well. Yeah, that you can't download onto the <sighs> PS4 for some strange reason um, without PlayStation Now, I believe it's called, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 So, <clears throat> um, I, I'm like I said, I'm not a huge fan of streaming games, so. That to me is really scary. Like all the games that I purchase will be gone forever. Yeah, and the thing is, it's not true of physical, right? Yeah. Unless the game is always online, and the company that maintains that game servers turn the game off, you're true. fine. Yeah. Like if you own the uh, Uncharted, Uncharted one, two, or three on PS3, you own it physically, and Sony shuts off the PSN server for, or like cuts the store off for PSN for yeah. PS3, you can still play the game. Yeah. Like, this is kind of the interesting part about these online consoles is that when they cut them out from PSN, they won't be able to get patched anymore either, right? Exactly, yeah. So even physical games will be affected, but you will at least still be able to play the game. In its, in its original state, I should say. Yeah, in, Yeah, in its original state. Yeah, because some people tried to debate me with that, too. They were trying to, like, well, you know, some games require a, down, a day one patch. And I'm like... That yeah. wasn't preval- super prevalent in PS3. Exactly. Uh, this generation's a lot more alarming with that. Because, yeah, ga- certain games are going to be unplayable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In their launch state, but... Um, but, I mean, it's mainly for, like, online games, online-only games. Yeah. I don't... I just don't see... I found Fantasy 15, though I hate that game. Like, if I put that game in there day one, I know they had a huge patch day one, but I think the game is still playable without that patch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it may be some stuff that you may have seen, but it will still be playable if if we're later on in the future on PS6 and then a PS4 goes offline and I want to play Final Fantasy 15 or some shit like that. Um, well, so this isn't going to be a super huge problem with this gen because it looks like the next two consoles for Sony and Microsoft are going to be backwards compatible. Yeah. So that's going to save the PS4 library. But when you go back further, though, like PSP, uh, PS Vita, PS3, Xbox 360, even the original Xbox to some degree, that's not going to be the case yeah. with those consoles once they're once they're shut off like once their network connectivity is shut down or taken away i mean that's it digital's done entirely like physical is going to have some downsides still but at least you'll still have a game and you can play it you know yeah and i'm going to i'm going to be honest most games probably i don't know i'm just making up numbers here but like m- my thought would be like 90% of games probably out of the box during ps3 xbox 360 generation were pretty ready to go oh you yeah know, they yeah. had day one patches but they weren't like vital for the game to run that you know, you know? that didn't start until like maybe the 2008 2009 even era. later than that i would say really okay uh, like we're, we're just like super common for huge patches yeah like day one patches i don't even really remember that happening before the ps4 came out 
Yeah, you know, it wasn't that common. It wasn't that common. Yeah. And then it became a crutch, and now it is a crutch. Yeah. Everybody does it. And some games literally aren't even playable on day one with <laughs> even physical copies. And I think that's wild. Which, that is... Yeah. But yeah, so it's up to the console manufacturers, though, to decide that they want these games to be, or they want their consoles, rather, to be backwards compatible going forward, and that's not going to be a guarantee with every console cycle, you know? And what if they decide that this next console cycle is the last one, you know? Then that's that's it. Like, if like say we have PS5 and then PS6 comes out, and they're yeah. not backwards compatible with PS5 for whatever reason, you know? Um that means that PS5 and PS4, when they're cut off from the network, they're just kind of fucked, you know? And then PS6 is all we have, you know? And the, the, the other issue with this whole thing is that these companies are really bad at maintaining a way for people to play these games. I was just about to say, so, like, the, there is a negative side to going all physical. Yeah. So, I think Nintendo's handheld games are very prevalent of that, yeah. whereas you have the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy games, yep. uh, the Nintendo DS games, even the 3DS games to a certain extent. Um they're very hard to come by because they made limited qu- quantities mm-hmm. of these co- of these uh physical games. Yep. Well, even now to this day, like I said, uh I think I mentioned on the last podcast, two podcasts ago <coughs> where I went to GameStop and I was looking for Fire Emblem. I went to the Prestige store yep. and she said, yep. "Yo, if you don't if you didn't pre-order it, we don't have it." She had to wow. call, yeah, she had to call another store and they just so happened to have some spares for Fire Emblem. Yeah. yeah. Um because Nintendo are going Nintendo's going by pre Well, here in America, Nintendo's going by pre-orders for the certain games cuz they they just don't understand the West apparently as far as like their target audience. So especially for Nintendo games like physical stuff is hard to come by like you may have some offshoot games yeah. that people have never heard of yeah. that may only sell 500 copies in the US and now you want to play that game again there's no digital copy of it not only that they took all their ROMs offline well yeah. you can still find them but you gotta search really, really search, yeah. yeah yeah and make sure <laughs> make sure you're not getting viruses now exactly well, the other, that th- this is what you're talking about with Nintendo is exactly why their games maintain value um, their games, for the most part, don't go down in price. Yeah. Even post-launch, like Smash Brothers is still sixty bucks. Yeah. And we're eight, nine months out from that game being released. That is extremely uncommon. Like even Breath of the no Breath of the Wild just had a price drop. Yeah, but it's like what forty? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's a two and a half year old game. I think that like on PS three or PS four and Xbox, uh, most games when they come out within two months, they're already down in price to forty. Yeah. Probably yep. it's really common for that to happen. Um, you don't have to wait very long. Nintendo's games are extremely; uh, they maintain their value extremely for extremely long periods of time. And like the longer you go, they actually start to accrue value again. Yeah. Because um, the number of copies becomes more limited as time passes. Yeah. Since they didn't make very many to begin with, so well, uh, like look at PS2. There are a couple games that that aren't. There are a lot of games actually that aren't on the PSN market now, and that are on PlayStation now. Yeah. Um. Like for instance, my prime example is Dot Hack. Uh, yeah, to get yeah. Dot Hack collection, you're spending well over three hundred dollars on eBay yeah, or yeah, Amazon yeah. just to get that because it's not on any server, and for whatever God know what reason, Bandai won't re-release the game or anything of that yeah, nature. Yeah. So, um, it's, it is both positives and negatives to digital and physical, but like, I just feel like everyone should at least want physical to stay now if you want to go environmental wise physical is bad like yeah all, yeah plastic all, cases yeah the cds but but for me there's there's a few reasons why i'm still mostly physical yeah one is that um if i buy a game and i don't like it i have the option of selling it yeah you know and that is a huge disadvantage to uh uh digital they still haven't uh, figured it out yeah remember how what i went through with the division two yeah to <laughs> oh my that God, game, yeah. and i couldn't get it refunded i mean that's completely absurd you know it's for a game that hadn't even been out yet and obviously sony's changed their policy since then yeah. to now allow certain things to be returned um of course you know the timing was perfect to screw me over but <laughs> um you know so that is true now but even so, it's still very limited. Nintendo is still really draconian with it. They will not refund almost anything. Which is wild to me. On Nintendo Switch, on the digital storefront. Well, no, it's not that surprising because they just, you know, got 
on Draconian, I guess, <laughs> on like on, YouTube. Uh, YouTube, yeah. yeah. But that, dude, that's why the only games I really buy digitally are really cheap games that I can get for less than twenty dollars, or indies that aren't you can't buy physically. Yeah, you know, those are really the only examples of games that I purchase digitally. And yeah, the other reason is I like to be able to have them to sell and. Um, also, I like to know that I can play my games like without an inter- connect- internet connection. If for whatever reason I'm without an internet for an extended period of time and I want to play a game that I don't have downloaded, well, I'm out of luck. You know? Yeah. I'm screwed. So you know, at least with physical, I'd be able to play. Yeah, because some some games do have to check the internet connection just for you to play the single player version of the game yeah, yeah. and that's very rare but it is some yeah. games out there that that require you to do that mm-hmm. um i don't know man it's just it's it's just weird that people do not see, see the future they just see the um, the convenience of it convenience of it yeah and digital is extremely convenient i I, I really like being able to just buy a game from home and not have to go anywhere and get yeah, it, I, not have to wait for it to come through shipping or whatever, what have you. But at the same time, it's a small price to pay to me to have to go to the store yeah. every so often, you know, yeah, but my buy bi- a game. I think my biggest gripe with it is <clears throat> digital games should at least cost $10 less than physical games. Yep. You're not paying for shipping. You're not mm-hmm. paying for the packaging or anything like that. You're so, not paying for the retailer having to hold it. Exactly. The space that they have to pay for. Yep. Exactly. So I feel like it should at least be $50 compared to the $60. <clears throat> worth. Which this is the biggest bullshit point about digital. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, they're taking a huge cut out of this now versus physical games. And we get no benefit to it. You know, there's None. nothing. They're not returning any of their savings to the customer in any way. And yes, they have sales all the time on PSN and whatnot, and, and they become a lot more prevalent in recent years, like really deep discounts on games. Um, and PS Plus, you get even deeper discounts, and they give you give you free games every month. But yeah. At the same time, though, it's it's the base price should be lower because your costs are lower. Yeah, you know? exactly. You don't have to do much of anything. You just have to have servers to host the game download. On. And that's, that's not, it. and that's not a lot of money, especially when it's your own servers, you're hosting. When it's already a cost of doing business. Yeah, exactly. You're going to do it anyways. Yep. So it's not like it's, it's not like a, it's an extra expense that's on top of everything else. Like, and yeah, that's the one thing I didn't see a lot of digital influencers were like drawing out. Like I would like for them, if they're going to be all digital, at least fight the companies on, Hey, since we're going all digital, it should not cost $60 for this game. It should cost $50 or $55 yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's just weird. Uh, I mean, I guess that brings us to like another point with that as far as like as far as like going physical and things of that nature you also have I think people are also tired of all the pre-ordered physical things you can get like the statues and all the other <laughs> the shit like that yeah. Yeah. yeah so I mean I understand that like a lot of people are tired of that but the digital pre-ordering isn't really that fantastic as well like I don't I think there was a um, game where you can di- if you pre-order it digitally like the premium part, part version of it you yeah. get like a, a digital book art and everything of that nature that I would like physical I wouldn't want a digital book art like that's yeah I don't like that's weird to me <laughs> digital digital pre-order bonuses are some of the dumbest things <laughs> I don't understand how, they must work because they they or they must believe they work because yeah. they're Almost every game has these things. Even single player centric games yes. have digital pre order bonuses and, and retailer exclusive pre order bonuses that it just it like do I really care that I get some hat that like I'm not even gonna put on the character? Like it just I don't get it. Like some games put in like extra missions or a level or something. Yeah. Or something like that. But that that kind of stuff, that's the kind of stuff that I think is kind of bullshit actually you're like withholding content from people that didn't buy the game in a certain place you know mm-hmm. yeah um and that that's just a i don't know it's a really bad practice i it i don't like pre-order bonuses i don't i don't like pre-ordering in general but it's it's just not a i don't know the whole the whole system is ugly to me with that and i want to 
I just don't think there's much better. The, that's the problem with the, with this digital and like general. There's very little benefit to the customer outside of convenience with it. You yeah, know? it's almost all stacked in the publishers slash hardware makers favor. Like I said, you can't sell your game codes back. You can't sell back digital games. And there have been discussions about allowing that in the future yeah. potentially like with Sony Steam's thought about it maybe and it's something I would really like to see because the second hand market for me is actually a big thing for me trading in games to get new consoles or different or games yeah. new games it's something I've used utilized a lot over the course of my life and I continue to utilize it because um, it's a nice way for me to mitigate cost of this hobby as it gets more expensive Yeah, and I don't want to I don't want to keep every game that I ever buy. You know? Yeah, like, and I mean, it, it, can, it, it can be being physical can become a hassle. Yeah. Um, especially like if you're moving or something of that nature, mm-hmm. you got all of these boxes and figure out what to do with them. Um, but I don't know it's just something about having a physical game even like i love the secondhand nature it's almost like for me i'm a shoe collector too so even when you do get like shoes that are secondhand you can mm-hmm. still clean them up really good and, yeah, and, yeah. and sell them to someone else and those shoes can be happy for someone else you know so it's not, kind of like a video game yeah, yeah. in a certain extent um but just to give an example of like games getting delisted like off the market yeah let's get into it um you know you have marvel's capcom origins um <clears throat> that game was delisted. You can't, and then I think they re-enlisted it again. When did that come out? The uh, Origins came out in the 360 era, and they took it okay. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Scott Pilgrim versus the World is a, a famous one. Oh, a lot yeah. of people love that beat 'em up game. One. Yeah, I forgot about that. One. Yeah. So the reason why that was delisted because it was an online game, and it involved several licensings for uh, p- several parties involved in the game creation, anywhere from Ubisoft to Brian Lee's, yeah. uh, who's the actual comic book creator, to the comic book publisher, uh, yeah. to the movie adaptation of Universal Studios. So everyone. Had had their hands in this yeah, and they couldn't yeah. come up to agreement to where they wanted to keep the game online yeah and there needs to be a contract in place for the game to be able to be sold exactly right? and this happened with uh, a few lord of the rings games yep recently because their contracts were limited they were only like five years or four years where they were allowed to sell the game yeah and the contract ran out and it wasn't renewed and that's the end of it that's it you, yeah you the, can't find the game anywhere you can't, you can't buy the game and i'm not even sure people who own it can download it yeah, you can't you can't download it like once that, it's off the market. One, yeah, I think that one was was one in particular where people couldn't even download it anymore. Yeah, like, it, if you didn't have it downloaded, you're just out of luck. You're yeah, out of luck. Scott Pilgrim was the same way, and even even demos, right? Because yeah. you remember uh, PT, the oh, famous yeah. PT trailer, yeah, and that was free, but still, that was free, and P- they still delisted that, and that's not on the market anymore. You can't download it at all. That's so weird. <laughs> and, and yeah, I, I mean, this doesn't happen often. I mean, th- I think that's a lot of people's counter argument to this is like it doesn't happen a lot, and it usually doesn't happen to games anybody cares about. But dude, at the same time, yeah, sure, that's true. But well, the fact that it happens to any games is a negative thing. That honestly, companies can take these games down whenever they feel like it. Well, I, I would. I would counter that argument because one game that everyone did care about was series that everyone cared about was the mm-hmm. Telltale series games. Oh, that's true. And they're all gone. Now. They're all gone. You can't get those games. I told that to someone online. They're like, "Wait, really?" I'm like, "Yeah, you, you can't, can't download any because he 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 cleaned out his his games and he's like, oh, I can just you know redownload it.' And he he actually DM'd me and I'm like, "Bro, I'm sorry, but you, I'm like, go try to look for it right now." And he did. And he was like, "Oh shit, you're right." I'm like, "See, this is the." I'm like, "But I did point to a link where you can download the physical or buy the physical games." Which like, those still work. Yeah. Exactly, those do still work, um, but yeah, you can't download them digitally anymore. They're off the market, and that's like yeah. the most current one I can think of where that had a huge following. It's not like a cult following, but those games were huge for a reason because everyone can play those games. Well, when we talked about this one that happened, that there's nothing set up like movies and music and stuff for when um, a band disbands or or a movie yep. company goes out of business where they they that money that is made of the sale of, of the of the of the movie or the music or TV show uh, goes into a pool that is disseminated amongst the people who were like royalties to yeah. the people who were a part of that uh, product yep. you know 
Um, that is not a thing in games. So that's why this happens because there's nothing set up like that to really happen. So these games just they just disappear. Yeah, and I mean Telltale is like that's crazy, dude. And like, I I would argue that that was a huge part of gaming culture mm-hmm. within the 360 to uh, within the sixth and seventh, no seventh and eighth gen- generation, like that brought those games, that those particular games back. Because I remember that style of gaming died for a while. We haven't seen yeah. games uh, that style of gaming That's since. Crazy man, yeah, those games. I can't believe they're they're just gone. They're like, gone, it's like man. Two years ago, they were like still pretty popular. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think about Tales from the Borderlands. That's only three or four years old. That game was insanely popular. People yep. were in love with that with that one. You know, it's like, and yeah, it's just over now. Walking Dead, I think, is the only one you can purchase because Skybound, the company yeah, that makes the comic, yep. um, you know, they already own the license, so yep. they just got the assets and they're selling the game now. Yeah, but if you want to buy the Wolf Among Us, uh, any of the Game of Thrones Batman, games, Batman, the Batman ones, Tales from the Borderlands, you can't. Yep, can't do it. Uh, I, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Minecraft. Oh, I forgot all about the Minecraft those. story mode. Yeah, can't man. buy those either. Yeah, no, there was a ton of them, man. There was a lot, and then the even older ones, like I mean, these were the were bad, but Jurassic Park and <laughs> Back to the Future that they did. Um, yeah, those were pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I watched some videos of the Jurassic Park. Oh my god, dude! Holy crap, it, it was awful. Um, but yeah, it's a. It's just, I mean, it's it, one of those things that it's a threat for any any. It's a threat at any time. Like I said, the, the the company that curates the store, that runs the store, has yeah. the ability to take down any game they feel like for any reason. Well, it not only take down, but in an instance, put them up. Yes. So Final Fantasy VIII, which recently just got announced for a remake mm-hmm. or a remaster, not a remake. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. A remaster. Yeah. Um, the reason they couldn't put that up for the longest was because it was one song in the opening credit that they did not have a license to. So they couldn't put it up. <sighs> Well, this was an issue for Kingdom Hearts too. Yeah. <laughs> for a while the uh, the the woman who sings the opening theme songs for all the games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Her her father is is famously like extremely uh, kind of a curmudgeon about licensing the music. Yeah. To the games and yeah they couldn't do remakes for a while because they couldn't get to an agreement with them about uh, letting them re-release the games because they have to come to a licensing agreement with everybody involved. You know. Wow, it's like, that's crazy. Yeah. So it took a while for that to happen and and it's yeah it is i didn't even know that it is crazy yeah that's why they, that's why we didn't get remakes for so long for for any of the king hearts i thought it was because they lost the source code that was one of the reasons but it, like that was, there was another issue with the music that was another problem oh for them. okay so um yeah it 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 there, yeah. there's a lot of factors that go into this yeah if disney decides tomorrow because a lot of people don't know that sore I think Sora, the character Sora, is owned by Disney, not Square Enix. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know for sure. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Disney decides tomorrow, like, hey, we don't want any of our shit on the Xbox platform, only PlayStation. Like, all the Xbox users will get yep. shunned from the Kingdom Hearts 3. Or Disney decides to open their own digital <laughs> storefront. Oh, my God, that would be terrible. Dude, no, th- no, see, this is a this is a real future that I think people are not taking, t- they're taking for granted with this. The only reason consoles are protected are because of the hardware. Yes. It has nothing to do with anything else. The hardware, the only reason that your your purchases are, are protected on, on those consoles, because those are, the, those are the mediums through which these companies sell their games. PC is a a perfect example of what happens when a marketplace is completely open and anybody can do anything they want because that's what PC is. Yeah. And this is where the Epic Game Store has come in and is starting to buy exclusives, right? Yep. So this is again, this is part of the problem with all digital future, right? Is what if we have a third storefront, a fourth storefront, and all these games get split up between all these companies. And, and each, all, and, and think about the publishers. EA has their own store. They don't sell their games on Steam. They don't sell their games on Epic Store. Ubisoft, they they do sell their games on Steam, but they don't have to. They don't have to. They don't have. They do to. it as a, like a courtesy now. Well, they do it because they think it will make them more money on PC too, yeah. right? But EA doesn't. None of their games are on any of these other storefronts. Um, and, and that's true of any publisher on PC. They can do whatever they want. They can open their own storefront. I mean, obviously, they have to 
uh, spend the money in terms of costs and upkeeping their own servers and, and bringing up their own servers to sell these games and then uh, building their own u- user interface for their store and whatnot. Yeah. But the reality is on PC that, and, and there's a specific game I want to talk about, is Rocket League. Epic bought Psyonix. Yep. And Rocket League is going to be sold on Epic Store. And I don't remember I don't think they actually said they're taking it off Steam. They're they they're not selling it on Steam. You can't buy it on Steam. If you already have it on Steam, you will still That's receive right. the downloads, the updates, right. and you can still buy content. So that alone is fucked up because you're segregating that audience and no one knew it was going to come into the ecosystem for multiplayer oh purposes. you're right if I, if I have a friend if I play on Rocket League and I have yes. a friend who wants to play he has to go he, he can't yeah he has to go through Epic Store and you have to hope that they do cross play between Epic Store and Steam you have to hope that because that's not a guarantee there's no guarantee of that yeah they don't have to do that and that's not it's not it's not automatic either those storefronts they have different multiplayer uh, systems that enable multiplayer their servers are different they don't just talk to each other it's not it's not so simple it's the same as cross play between xbox and ps4 like yes it's not that difficult for developers to do it but the companies have to agree to let them do that exactly has to agree to let epic games uh games on the epic game store do cross play multiplayer with their games yeah that's not a guarantee and so you have that with rocket league and then the other part about it is Epic is under no obligation to allow people to download Rocket League, even if they purchased it. They could take all of those away if they wanted to. The only thing stopping them is the fact that that would destroy their goodwill yeah. and would alienate millions and millions of customers and piss millions and millions of customers off. But if that game didn't have a recurrent tra- uh, microtransaction model, I could see them doing it. What benefit do they have to maintaining servers for people to play on in Rocket League and like continue to send patches to that version of the game when they're making no money off of it, you know? Yeah. The only reason they do it is because there's probably money in it for them and they don't want to have bad PR, but there's nothing stopping them. There's no rule that says they have to keep the game up. None. There's no rule at all. So I think that's the that's the naivete that is extremely prevalent with digital is that they're like, oh, they never do that. They never do it. It's like... They already done it, man. If they, think, <laughs> if they think there's a monetary benefit to them doing it, like if they went through the logic stream of like, hey, we bought Rocket League, we have 5 million players on Steam. I mean, if we don't let them download their game and they are really addicted to Rocket League, they're going to come what? to Epic. They got to go buy it on Epic Store now so we could get double dip on our customer base. You know, it's fucked up. But if they thought that way and they thought they could get enough customers to do that, why would a company not do it? If if they think it would help their bottom line, you know it's 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 not and that far fetched. I can totally see you having to if you bought like Assassin's Creed right on a PlayStation Four. Yeah, I can totally see like, hey, you have to sign you have to sign in and download the client onto your PlayStation mm-hmm. to play Assassin's Creed or. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say Microsoft has some kind of... Well, no, that's a bad example because they own Xbox. So, yeah, same example. Like, let's say, you know, you buy NBA or Madden 2020 on Xbox. And they're like, oh, you got to download our version of the Xbox Origin to Mm -hmm. play this game. Like, I already own the game. Like, and this can happen to our physical games, too. Like, you have to sign in to play the game. Which is true of any EA game, actually. Yeah. You need to have an EA Access account to be able to play online. Yeah, so, I mean, that is, I didn't even think about that. I mean, that's a reality. Like, they could easily do it on consoles, in my in my opinion, because they already kind of have a foothold on it. It's like a yes. little small test market with the subscriptions, right? I, the only thing stopping it is Sony and Microsoft themselves saying, you can't do this. Yeah. That's the only thing stopping it. But if, if, again, if Sony and Microsoft are convinced that there is money in them for it and they think it's beneficial to their business, they will do it. There's nothing stopping it. There's nothing stopping it, you know? But... I don't think the problem is I just don't think I don't think EA and Ubisoft could ever convince them that it's beneficial to them to do that because it's like they want everybody to go through the PlayStation store because that's where they make the money. Yeah. You know, if they allow another company to open a storefront on their store, they're losing money through those transactions, you know, that they otherwise would have had through PSN, you know, PlayStation Network. So 
um, there, there's a lot of downsides to it, and that lack of ownership, I think, is is something maybe right now that none of us feel uh, that a lot of people don't feel like is a big deal. But I think in 20 years, when these games are retro and this is the retro market, and we can't play any of them. And Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo are doing a horrific job of making sure that these games are still available long term. You know, that's a that is that is not a future I want to live in as a gamer. Like, yes, I don't want to play retro games all the time, but when I do, I want to be able to do it. You know, there's plenty of games from the PS3, PS4 generation that I'm going to want to play in 10 years. You know? Yeah, I mean. There's a whole site dedicated to delisting <laughs> delisted games. <laughs> like what's the what's it called? Delistedgames.com. Dot com. Man, man. And they just recently delisted a game that was very popular. I remember when it just came out, uh, which is DuckTales Remastered. That Wait, game's delisted. What? Yes. That just came out like two years ago. Yeah, it's gone. Wow. It actually just got off the market uh wow. on the eighth of this year. Holy crap. On the eighth of August this year. Oh my god, dude. I thought I saw stories about that. That's crazy, man. Yeah, and they don't know really know the reason why. They suspect that it's probably... Exp- um, it's just licensing. Yeah. Exp- it's almost always licensing with yeah. this stuff. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so, I mean, all of this, I hope, is informing people that there are very serious downsides to all digital, you know? We lose a lot of our control over our own purchases when we are digital only and we have to deal with this on steam and the other issue another issue with all digital is that and this is specifically bad on consoles i mean montreal you know people right that have thousand game libraries in steam right yeah imagine yeah. trying to navigate that i have like eight, i have like 75 games and i hate it i get no i got like maybe 40 or 45 yeah, I get so annoyed <laughs> that I have to like scroll and like look through the look through the tiny text and like alphabetically figure out which game is where yeah you know? like because i just i just got my new computer up and i'm trying to look through the list to, to install grim dawn and it's like everything's grayed out so it's like i mean yes there's a search feature but at the same time like on consoles imagine the crappy interfaces that ps4 and xbox one have and uh even uh nintendo trying to find your digital purchases on those consoles when you have say 100 games 150 games you know like you're scrolling for pages and pages trying to find your game and if there isn't a search function man you're just you're just screwed well i just found another game that's about to be delisted yeah four is a six Forza, Motors- Forza Motorsport 6 will uh, enter end of life status on September 15th. This means the the game and its associated add-on content, including the car packs and expansion, will no longer be available for purchase. Players who own Forza 6 before the date will still be able to download it and play it and its associated content as normal, but the game but the game and add-on content will no longer be available on Xbox Live to purchase. And this is like a current game. This is not like that a DuckTales. Like, this is like this is not DuckTales Remastered. That came out last year? I think 2015 maybe. Oh, 20. Okay. Forza okay. That's Wait. that yeah, that's older. That's still on this generation. I know. That's crazy yeah. though. But that dude, that's totally licensing too cuz they have real cars in those games, right? Yeah, yeah. So they have to maintain licensing agreements with every single company that has a car in the game and honestly if it's like one company that's like hey like you're no we're not renewing or whatever like they could just do the work and take those cars out of the game but then it's like it depends on how many though you know yeah yeah you can't do that for everybody so because then you're gonna have a game with no cars (laughs) that's not even playable anymore so yeah it's a yeah man that's that's crazy man forza that's a that's a microsoft first party game Yes. You know, that's that's pretty nuts. That is pretty nuts. Oh, um, man, I used to love this game. Black just got fucking uh, delisted. <laughs> holy shit. Montreal's found the holy grail of games. Delisted games, man. Yeah, it's... I don't know. Yeah, the, the interface thing is a big concern of mine. Like, because these companies don't really have great interfaces. They don't. And if your, your library is all, all digital, trying to find your games is going to be a pain, you know? Um, it's easy enough when you only have 10, but many of us have more than that. And honestly, even somebody like me, like I have a big library because of PS Plus, you know? Yeah. All the games I've downloaded or added to my library over the years, I probably have 150, 200 games. This kind of actually know? makes me want to buy 
uh, <laughs> a hard drive, attach it to my PS3 and my Xbox 360, and, and just, just download a bunch of stuff. Download a bunch of stuff that that's like maybe ten or fifteen bucks, mm-hmm. five bucks maybe, and just try to keep it on that hard drive just in case I want to come back and play it. Yeah, well, think about this, right? As much as we all hate EA and uh, everybody's backing on Bioware right now, imagine a future Ooh, where I know where you're going with this. Bioware goes out of business. And they did list all their games. EA, or someone EA tanks because I mean they're 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 in hot water yeah. right now. Imagine a world where they tank as a company. The only thing that's going to save those games is somebody buys the IPs. And yes, Mass Effect probably will get purchased. Yeah, but yeah. not everything's going to get purchased, dude. SimCity games, they might not get purchased. Yeah, City Skylines has become SimCity. If you're like. Why would somebody buy that? You know, it's like yeah. f- for the old for the old games, you know. So it's like there's tons of IPs that EA has that Star Wars is another one. Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic that wouldn't even be purchasable. I don't even think you'd be able to buy the rights to sell those games unless Disney let you. What if Disney decided? That's a good point because we are we already know from the past couple months that Disney and EA are kind of on like. Rocky, Rocky, yeah, Rocky ground. What if Disney decides like, hey, we don't want your games. We don't want you touching our games because of your reputation. They can just take Battlefront and everything yeah. offline. Yeah. Yep. They end the agreement. It's over. Those games are gone. <laughs> it is nothing we can do and about no, it. But that—that's—that's that's probably true of older games too, like Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. They could do that with those games too. That's it's all up to these companies. Like, there's nothing tying the games to the marketplaces. Yeah, and even if you bought the game, like that's that's what we're trying to say. Like, that's what I was trying to tell people that you're pretty much just like a on a a rental agreement for life until the the, the shelf life of the game, I should say, or, or the, the company goes out of business. Or the company goes and out of business. Nobody picks up the IP. And honestly, Disney is it, Disney's not a gaming company. They're not. So, th- I mean, they're letting Ducktales go, and people love that game. Exactly. And and dude, and thing the thing is, <clears throat> the, I could easily see a company like that looking at e, their relationship with EA as a loss and yeah. cutting it off, and then just taking all the games away. And dude, like. What put do they it, care if a bunch of gamers are mad at them? Yeah, like, they put it in the vault. Like, okay. Yeah, they just put it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like they do with their movies. Yeah, they you actually know? they do do that. They yeah. do that with their movies. So it's it and it frustrates people to a ridiculous degree. Yeah, because you can't find their movies. Because you have to wait for the re-release. Like, oh, this yep. is a special re-release of yep. this game and or this stop movie. Stop selling the movies. Yeah, and that's true digitally as well for periods of time because they just that's their strategy. You know quote putting it in the vault yeah right and game companies could easily do the same thing easily that's yeah and disney's been doing that for a while with the so vault I thing i just i just think i just think people are really naive about how like safe this is for all of us you know it's like i, I that's why i don't want to see an all digital future right now yeah i'm, I'm ready not for it i'm not, not ready, ready for, for it, it. Yeah. like i just we need the, we the need industry's the, not mature enough I think we need to just update our policies and yes. on licensing in general. No, and returns have to become a thing. Yeah. Like, before, before that's because that's another thing we haven't talked about besides my brief mention of Division 2. Like, for the most part, you really cannot return digital games once you start playing them. And until that changes, this is not a viable future, you know? Well, what if the returns were like something like the Steam card market thing? You remember how Steam had the cards, and some cards would be like they'll release a certain amount of digital cards, and then you can sell those cards in the Steam market, mm-hmm. and some of those cards would be worth like hundreds of dollars. What well, if they had something like that in place? I don't know how that will work with uh, video games. I don't though. think a lot of companies would want to deal with it. Yeah, they, they, I just don't see it. The way, what Steam does is is it makes them a lot of money, but it's also probably a big headache. Yeah, because they have to make sure that the market's not the economy is not unethical it's also not getting like messed up by like you need like legitimate economists on your staff <laughs> to make sure that people are not gaming your market to make a shitload of money off of it yeah you know? yeah you're right um it's it's more of a head it's, it's it's a lot more of a headache i just don't see that being a thing but um yeah and, and also I, I think not being able to sell games back is another huge hit to this idea of the all digital future because um there are many people who cannot afford that many games and yeah. that's how they afford games is trading them in you know and I, I'm not necessarily one of them I don't have to trade stuff in to afford stuff but I'd like to to yeah. kind of mitigate my cost like, well I mean it's just 
even it's affordable for people who who want to go in and buy a used game like yeah they can't really purchase the game at sixty dollars right now they really want the game so they wait a couple of months and then they see that it's on the shelf used for six for 30 bucks and they're like oh okay i can afford this now and they can play it and enjoy it with the all digital market that's not viable because that price can stay the same forever yeah. until they decide oh a flash sale and they even sometimes the flash sales are depending on the game well, doesn't drop so that's the other thing is that the, the digital market is not as affected by market trends the way uh, physical market is yeah right? they can control it well yeah because they can completely control the market they have there is no supply constraints because it's digital you know yep. so the only thing that affects them is demand you know, that's yep. the only thing that would affect prices is how much demand there is. The way, I mean, with physical supply and demand is a real thing. Like you were talking about with Nintendo earlier, there's a lack, low, there's a limited supply for most Nintendo games. So that creates a price increase in those games because they're hard to find. Yeah. So the, the, the supply does not meet the demand, but that is impossible in digital. Like you will always meet the demand, you know? Unless you make up your own limitations, you know, <laughs> yeah. which, I they, mean, that's possible, too. They could. Though. They, they could. totally could. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but... I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it where they've had, like, it was certain games that have, like, oh, yeah, you know... Well, they do it beta testing all the time, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, we only have this amount of spaces left, and knowing... Well, another thing... This is an idea. I don't want to. I don't know if I should put this out here. <laughs> this is the kind of thing I could think we could see in the future, though. Is that like you'll see sales, like yeah. a flash sale for a specific oh, I know, game. I think I know you're going with this. And they put on the site and they make this publicly visible. Uh, only three thousand copies available at this oh price. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, you know, like wouldn't that be fucking terrible? Yeah. And then, and then once they hit the three thousand, they go back up to the regular price. And then, how many people would see the flash sale thing and like see an article saying, "Oh, this game's on sale right now," blah blah blah, and like go. Well, and Steam look at does it. it with their like. This game's on sale for twenty one hours at yeah. two dollars, and yeah, then it yeah, jumps yeah. up to like fifty dollars again or something like that. Yeah. yeah, well, no, but mine's a little different though because there's no timer on it. It's just a number of copies. Sold number of copies at sold. that price. Yeah, you know? so it's it's a different way to do sales, and th that's the kind of thing I feel like they would explore. And I don't think that's beneficial to consumers. You know, that it's kind not, of thing. So yeah. Well, I didn't even think about that. That's crazy. I mean, well, you're manufacturing demand. All right, you mean you're manufacturing supply? Right? Yeah. That's how you make a supply demand uh, situation on that marketplace is by creating a supply of copies that are at this price point. You know. Damn. Man, this this is gonna it's gonna get crazy in a couple of years. Yeah, man. I mean, because I'm pretty sure. I mean, we're not even. About yeah, yeah, we're not even no marketing. That's an original idea. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like but, we're not even yeah. like in marketing at yeah, all. And like yeah. we thought of that I'm pretty sure someone who has a degree in marketing is like, oh, we can do this in the future mm -hmm. if we. And I don't know, man. That's. But I mean, that's that's the thing. That's why I'm scared of it. That's why I had this discussion, and uh, I wanted to bring awareness to it because I just didn't. Know. I was just bringing up a general discussion, like, wow, you guys really go digital and. The simple fact that so many people are comfortable with it. And you would think it's just like younger people, but it's a lot of people in our age group that are like Dude, totally comfortable oh with it. Oh my God, tons of people yeah. are totally, yeah, like the guys we work with. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't remember the last time I bought a physical game. I'm like, what? What? And I mean, like, to each their own, like, but it's just like, shit, whoa, dude. man. That, well, see, that's the thing is, like, that people people who probably don't buy physical are people who don't need to trade in yeah. and, like, can afford everything, and they don't care, or they don't buy a lot of games, Yeah, you know? or they don't really care about, I guess, the emotional attachment that physical yeah. does give to you. I mean, because there is advantages to, to digital, right? Like, I, I listen to some girls... Um, she gave me a post on Twitter and she was like, well, I do support digital because, you know, my house burned down and 90 percent of my physical games burned down with it. That is fair. And I mean, that's a That's an edge case. But yeah, it's a possibility to anybody. Yep. But in the same sense, I mean, I don't know, man, when I when I purchase something digital. I don't want to say it doesn't get as much play. The game that I played the most that I bought digital is two games. Yeah. Uh, I bought one game on on uh, 
PC, which I guess that would, I don't really count that as a physical. I mean, a, a, a digital sale because it's PC. That's the only way you can really get it. But mm-hmm. um, Fallout New Vegas, I put like 120 hours into that game. Yeah, yeah. And then on the console wise, Dark Souls Three. I bought that digital, yeah. and I put like maybe 60 hours and 70 hours into that game. Okay. Yeah. Um, but to me, when I buy a game digital. I barely play unless it's like a remake or like an older game or something like that. Like I, I, yeah, re- yeah. I came, I went through all the Resident Evil series because they had them on yeah, yeah. digital sale, and I played those games just like stuff like that. So older games, yeah, I will buy them digitally. I don't have no problem oh, with well, that. I mean, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. What? Well, see, that's the advantage of digital. Yeah. Is is that yeah older games? It's a great way to play older games. But this is the problem: is that these companies are so bad about making sure their back catalog is available. Yeah. Yeah. Nintendo took away Virtual Console, and like we have this shitty replacement that, <laughs> like, dude, what is the Nintendo Online trash service? I don't want to play Super Mario Three. What is? It? <laughs> I can play Super Mario Three anywhere. So people that did download the Virtual Console games, can they still play them? Yes. Okay. As long as they're downloaded, yeah. I don't think you can download them anymore, though. That's that's wild. The, the Wii Shop's closed, so so you can't buy anything off the Wii U Shop. No. Not the Wii U, the Wii Shop. Oh, the Wii the, Shop. The Wii Shop channel is gone. It was yeah. gone last year. It's just gone. So oh yeah, I remember. If you that. don't have your games downloaded from Virtual Console for that console, you're out of luck. You don't. You can't download them anymore. That is kind of what I'm talking about. Is like that service is not available anymore. Like there is no online connectivity for the Wii. Wow. That's it. You can't even hear that music anymore. Oh, it's so good. Anyways, um, so yeah, like you can't download those games. And bringing up what you were just talking about too, with the with playing digital games less, I'm the same way. I, I mean, you see it every time you come in here. I have a pile of physical games <laughs> yeah. that is my backlog, and that is my reminder of the games that I want to play. Yeah, and I don't have that on PS4 like digitally I bought Dragon Age Inquisition the complete edition last summer on a flash sale and I bought Hat in Time last summer on a flash sale with the intention of playing both of those games at some point I've never turned either one of them on because you forget them on because they're they're buried in your console exactly my point you don't have visibility to your library that's my other issue with the interface yeah is you don't have visibility into your library and you don't have a way to sort your games really not that I know of so well, you don't have Xbox, a way to categorize they, your games into like folders of like I want to play these games yeah. you know like, like on Xbox you can do that that thing you can, you can have tiles on so your front you page can. maybe you can I don't know but I just on, haven't looked into it but like, I know on Xbox One you can mm. I know on PS4 you can have a folder you can yeah. make a folder but it's not like it's just like folder. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, it's, it's just a picture. Of yeah, a it's just a picture. Of a, yeah, it's like looking. you may have like. There you go, Sony. Good job. That's the four point update, guys. So you can do folders now. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. But what I remember is just like. You, you can even name the folder, right? So you just yeah, have yeah. games I want to play. Like yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how it looks when I when I'm when I'm reading it. That's yeah. how it sounds in my head. Like games yeah. you want to play, but then I look going to Xbox. It's like, man, look at it, all these games you got. Like Banjo Kazooie, like, yeah. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah, and it's like right there on my front page the way I customize yeah. it. Whereas yeah. uh, even with the Switch, right? Um, your digital games they're on that long slab, right? So you keep going, even the games that are physical. It'd say like you need a cartridge to play it, but they're right there. They're still yes, there. They're still there. And it reminds me like, hey, you have all these games available on your on your Switch right now to play, or in, in on well, in the backlog. This or whatever. is the nice part about the handheld nature of the Switch too. The case I have for my Switch has my game yeah, cards exactly. underneath the Switch where it, where it lays, <laughs> so I see them every time I pick my Switch up. What happened case. to cases, man? You remember? I don't know if it was just me when I was younger when yeah. I had all my games. Like I used to have the cases still, but I had yeah, like yeah. a carrying case for like. Fuck yeah! <laughs> the switch. That's why the switch is so good, though. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I have that for the switch, and and there's eight game cards underneath my switch. Yep. Oh, seven right now. I don't have an eighth. One inside the console, so I only have eight games. But um, 
I see them every time, and I'm like, yeah, I want to play you at some point. Yeah, I want to play you at some point. I get constantly reminded yeah. of the games I want to play. And, yeah, it's the same with the, the pile I have in there. You know, it's just – so I don't get that with a digital library. You know, it's harder for me to get that with a digital library. And I think it's just cool when people come over, like, other gamers come over your house. It's like anything like – car enthusiasts when they go over someone's house mm-hmm. and they see a whole bunch of cars or mm-hmm. something of that nature like when game enthusiasts come over they it's like a certain <sighs> amount of respect I mean that they're not gonna judge you by I mean well some people well, may so yeah I, but I wanna point here though when you see somebody's digital library you get the exact opposite reaction yeah <laughs> Yeesh, dude. You feel like a it's a it's a hassle, yeah. Yeah, like bro, you got a thousand games on Steam, like, oof, jeez, man, yeah. like that's a lot of money, bro. <laughs> like, not to mention they show your wallet sometimes, like yeah. how, how many games you, yeah. how much money you spent on these games. It's just like, listen, bro, I don't yeah, want to remind you of that. Yeah, man, it's like I don't know. And then Steam, like, yeah, when you go on certain people's Steam profiles, it's like, they have 700 games in there. <laughs> You're like, whoa, yeah. what the fuck? I mean, we know somebody who has, like, a thousand. <laughs> like, it's crazy, man. I'm like, my brother has, like, I don't know, 500 or something. I'm like, hey, I'm guaranteed he didn't play off 500. No. No, no, fuck. That's the, that's, yes. <laughs> that is the problem with Steam. And that's why the, that's why the sales, like, their revenue's probably gone down because I think this has happened to everybody. Yeah. A lot of people have gone through this arc. But, dude, I yeah, I used to fall for the sales. And I'd be like, oh, my God, I can get this game for $10. Oh, it's awesome. It's so much content. It's like, then you never turn the game on. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Like, I bought Skyrim on uh, on Steam <laughs> back in, like, 2012, I think. It was $30 for the Legendary Edition. With yeah. All the DLC. And I was like, oh, man, I really want to play this game. And, like, all the DLCs with it. It's 30 bucks. I'm like, I have literally... Never turned it on. The only game I bought on Steam sale, and this is when I first built my PC, yeah, um, was Fallout New Vegas, and it was like ten dollars with everything. And I'm like, fuck yeah, let's yeah, get yeah, that yeah, shit. Dude, and I, I played the fuck out of that game. Yeah, yeah. But every other game, like I downloaded The Witcher Three, I downloaded, but I played that on my Xbox. So I downloaded The Witcher Three. It was like ten dollars. I'm like, man, you know what? I'm thinking I'm gonna try to finish it on PC. And I just I download it and, I, and I'm like, why the fuck did I buy this game? Why did I? <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, yeah, I have like a running wish list on Steam that <laughs> I never buy anything from. I'm like, 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 cause I, I'll browse Steam sometimes and be like, oh, this game looks cool. This game looks really cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I'd like to play this game. And it's like, yeah, I never actually buy any of them though. It's like when you buy on physical, it's like an obligation to p- to play them. Yeah, because you physically you know you it. spent the money. It's yeah. a constant reminder that you spent the money with digital, right? Like, those games I bought, they're in the back of my head, and I do still want to play them, but it's not... I don't get constantly reminded in I, any way. I think the only game that you play recently that's digital that, like, put time and effort to is Fail Seal. Yeah, but that's because that's it's the a end- physical version for yeah. it. If I could buy that game physically, I would. Yeah. I would have bought that physically. Absolutely. That's a game I'd love to own physically. See, that's the thing. Physical games, for me, the ones I keep are the truly special games. Yeah. The 9 out of 10s, the ones that are, like the ones that like get on or get close to my top 100 games of all time list yeah. those are the games I keep you know like the Xenoblades I have them like well I don't have Xenoblade Chronicles X because I sold my Wii U and there's no other play- way to play that Yikes, game I still got it but <laughs> if Nintendo releases that game on Switch I'm buying it physically Yeah. even if I don't play it I just want to own it because I like that game a lot Yeah. you know and it's like that's true of most of the games I own that's why I trade in because there's a lot of games I'm like I'm never going to play this again there's no reason to have this you know, it's just taking up space. You know, it's like my game shelf is pretty pretty limited. I don't have a ton of games, but um, what I do have is stuff that I really want to keep for the most part. Yeah, and I have a so. giant bin full of video games. Like, <laughs> my girlfriend was Man, like... Have I ever showed you my shelf? Yeah, you did. I, but did. I think so. I think so. Uh, I'll show you after, this, after we're done. Yeah, I have a giant bin. I'm going to take a picture and show you. Well, yeah, because you just moved. So yeah. you, you got a full accounting of everything you own, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, like I barely had so, it. So, b- by bin, are we talking one of those like giant plastic bins? It's like about as big as a table. For real? Yeah, <laughs> dude. <laughs> man, yeah, I'm very minimalist. I'm not a material person for the most I part. Am, man. That's why I love physical. Like what you see in there is out of control. I hate it. I want to like fucking really? burn everything in there because I'm I'm I don't like that kind of clutter being in there. I like to have it. Yeah. But it'll be more organized. Like that's why I have it in the bin right now because once we move to our final place, I am gonna get some like Elf shelving and stuff like whatever, that and yeah. start pulling Fair it up. Enough. 
Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the all digital future, it's coming. It will be here at some point. But it's it, the, the, the last point I want to make, really, is, is kind of the arc that books took, is that mm. there was a period of time when the Nook came out and then the Kindle came out that people were like, physical books are going to be dead in five years. Like, we're yeah. never going to read books the way we used to. And, and lo and behold, physical books are fine. You know, people yeah. still buy them. People still read them. They actually have a market, the half books. Yes, half price books still exist. Yeah. Like, there are companies out there that buy used books and sell used books. And, and like, I don't know exactly how well the market's doing, but it's still around so and it, even me i'm not a huge book connoisseur but when i do buy a book i prefer it physical, physical. me too i'm yeah. the same way so i feel the same way about games yeah you know and i i, I kind of wondering if the same flow is going to happen with games Maybe. that people are all going to think that we're going all digital and then physical games just kind of stick around because they're worth it <laughs> you know I, yeah that could be the you case know, it's like they're not like because right now i think digital game sales overtook physical for the first time a few months ago yeah um like overall um and that was a big deal but i do wonder how far that pendulum is going to swing i don't i don't i don't know if it's going to go like 80 20 you know especially with the the um the size of the games and the hard drive space and everything of that nature. Yeah. I mean, when games are 100 gigabytes. Well, if you really want to buy a game, but you got to buy it, buy another hard drive. Yeah. You yeah. know. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Yep. Then again, the physical copies get installed anyway, so the games don't play off the discs anymore the way they used to. Yeah, I so. wish they would go back to that shit. It's There's... too slow. Yeah. It'll never happen because it's just, it's just too slow to read off a disc. Yeah. Particularly when the SSDs are uh, out with the next gen, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So. Oh well. Well, got any other thoughts, man? No, that's it. I think that All was right, a good man. conversation. Yeah, no. I, I just wanted to bring awareness to everyone, special digital and physical. Made some good points. I don't hate digital, by the way. I don't either. I mean, neither of us do. I I like digital. I'm glad it's there. I like it as an option. You know. Um, but, but it should remain I don't, yeah, as an option. It should be options. Yeah. I don't want it to be the only thing. You know, I don't want to be forced to do it. So, all right, guys. Um, so, if you liked this episode, please like the episode, review the episode, subscribe to the show on whatever feed you're listening to it on. Uh, if you could share it with your friends, we would really appreciate that so we can grow the audience. If you'd like to talk to either one of us on Twitter, you can do so at I Trap for the Hokage for Montreal. That is the number four, not the word. I am at Thundernote01. The show is is at the player's take. If you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter or send them to the players take zero one at gmail.com. And uh, next week we'll back, be back to a normal news cycle. Uh, I think we're, we'll be, yeah, we'll we be done with be. the trips. You probably won't get another one of these for a while. So, um, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're until, right. I don't know, maybe the holidays or something like that. Probably until not until next year for me. I'm yeah. not traveling again. So, yeah, next year. Not, I mean, I'm, I'm not traveling for probably a year <laughs> so um so yeah we'll be back to a normal cadence so hopefully look forward to that all right guys i hope you enjoyed this one and we will see you on the next one all right bye guys